<laughs> Welcome wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to use a cheat sheet. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I am so blessed. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's just overwhelming. That, that song so got me. So got you. Excellent. I, and I loved uh, how you just sort of turned it over when you couldn't remember the word. Or the tune, you, know, you just sort of turn, turned it over and, and, and the, the part of you that's, that's uh, all connected up, the part of you that's unity, the part, part of you that uh, knows where, where God is living in your heart, uh, took over, I think. That's, I'm, I'm describing your internal process, but, it's, but it's, that's how it looked to me from over here, looking at it. And I and I want to want to sort of honor that because that's kind of what we're trying to do, you know, not just here this morning, but every day. And I don't know. Sometimes we get it right, don't we? <laughs> I think that's I think that's right. We do. I another way that I've been blessed. Well. So I was blessed by that by that terrific song. I've also been blessed to be here this morning. Uh, I'm blessed because I was the interim pastor at Suquamish UCC for two years, and then the interim came to an end. And, and since that time that the interim has come to an end, I've been going around and, and sharing love, that is to say, receiving a, a great deal of love and giving some of it back. <laughs> I mean, if I'm if I'm truthful, I give some of it back, you know. <laughs> but but and one of the places that I've been blessed to do that has been here. This will I think be my third time here, and I'm and I'm so blessed to be here. Another way. I, I didn't know this is how I was going to start the big list of all the ways that I'm blessed, but <laughs> but. Um, uh, another way that I'm blessed is that before I was at Suquamish, I was, I was in the Black Hills of South Dakota, I, wow, and in uh, Custer, South Dakota, and in South, in South Dakota, the United Church of Christ in South Dakota has a, is divided into, into um, associations. The conference there is divided into associations, and one of those associations is called the Dakota Association. And the Dakota Association is made up of, of Native American Lakota churches. There are about 12 of them, and they stretch all the way across South Dakota, more or less following the, the Missouri River. They go from North Dakota down to Nebraska, and all in the middle there. And I was just truly blessed by my interactions that I was able to have with those, those Lakota people. And, and they're, they're extremely wise in their own ways. And one of the ways that they're wise is that they have more than one creation story. You know, isn't it a good idea to have more than one creation story? Because who's, who's going to say that creation happened just this way, you know, or is happening? I usually like to talk about creation is happening. You know, I'm being created in this moment now and, and in the, all the moments to come. But one of their creation stories is, has uh, the everything was created by Inyan. Inyan created everything, and, and the, reason, the way that Inyan did that is by dividing Inyan's self into everything. And so that, so that uh, yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, and so, and so in the end, Inyan was just in everything, and so as a result of that, that particular one of their creation stories, they have this they have this terrific phrase. And since I hope there's nobody Lakota here, I'm going to try to pronounce the phrase. Because every time I try this, when there are Lakotas in the room, they sort of look at me. <laughs> but the the phrase is Mitakawe Owasi. and and what that means, huh? Is it? Or do you know how to pronounce it? Um, not completely, but you did pretty good. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Part Lakota. Part Lakota. All right. Well, I, 
<laughs> now oh, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I before I try put myself out there and tried to pronounce it. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, that and what that means is we were all one, and and uh, and what that means and they really carry it a long ways. They carry it a long ways. So not only are you and I one, or all the people of the world one, but also all the four leggeds and the two leggeds and the feathers and 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 the dirt and the rocks and when I mean and you can feel that if you're in the if you're in the Black Hills the Black Hills the, the reason they're called black it's because they're covered with these pine trees and the bark is very dark and so when you're when seen from a distance they look black but the other color that they look they have huge rocks that that are older the the Black Hills are older than the Rockies or any of the, the big mountains. They're, and they used to be huge, but they've kind of evolved into, into these beautiful little hills. And they have these wonderful green rocks. They're green, and, they, and, and those are wonderful. And those are part of Inyan and part of God, too. And so, and so whereas our, our unity principle is that, is that uh, God lives in us, right? And so we're good. I say it right? I think that's right. God's divinity lives in me, and so I'm good, and, and in you, and so you're good. The, and I'm not sure that that's the way you'd think about it, but the, the birds and the, yeah. and the frogs and the um, mountains and the trees and all, all of that are part of God, too, and also good. As God says in the in the biblical uh, creation story, this is very good. That's, that's what God says about it. This is very good. And who who is God talking about when God said this is very good? He was talking about you, and and you and me and and the trees and the rocks and the frogs and the and the birds and and the buffalo. I love the buffalo. Somebody was telling me a story about waiting waiting to for some uh, goslings to make their way across the the road when we were sitting out there this they, they were talking about that but in south dakota what happens is you you go out into the the state park and and they're a buffalo and they they come and stand on the road and you better wait for them <laughs> because if, if you don't wait for well you have to wait for them. They're bigger than your car. <laughs> <laughs> you wait for them, they don't wait for you. Right. They don't they don't care. <laughs> they're Buffalo wait for no man. And they, one time I was I was driving through Wind Cave Park and I was waiting for the buffalo and they were standing on the road in the wintertime. They like to stand on the road because they lick the salt off the road. Because people have come and put salt on the road, so the buffalo figure that that's for, that for them. Yeah. And so they stand there in the road and lick it off the road, and then they came over and licked the salt off of my car. And I, I must have been 15 minutes, and they licked very thoroughly all over my car. So at the, so at the end of the of the time that they were that they were there. Uh, my car was covered with these buffalo tongue marks. <laughs> and you know, I left it that way for a week or something like that, as long as I could stand it and like, get it washed, because it was so cool. And I, another, way of, another way in which I'm so blessed. Now, this morning, I know we've already had a lot of Palm Sunday stuff, but there's a there's a reading in John. I, it's a short one. It's John 12, 27 and 28. And it's Jesus speaking. And it's, well, it's this time and uh, just before the end of Jesus' life. And some people have gathered, including some Greeks. You know who the Greeks are, right? That's you guys. Every, everybody who isn't a Jew who hears the story of Jesus is a Greek. <laughs> but I mean, in the world at that time, the, they, they didn't know about Americans and stuff like that. There was no such place, at least as far as these people were concerned. So 
I don't know what the Greeks expected Jesus to say to them, but this is what he said. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven which said, I've glorified it, and I will glorify it again. So, I was hoping to start out then with a question. Uh, who are your spiritual superheroes? Now, I'm going to say that Jesus is one of my spiritual heroes, and, and the reason is because of the way in which he glorified God. And I'll talk about that some more pretty soon. But uh, some other examples of who a spiritual superhero might be is, um, oh, let's see. How about Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, uh, yeah, or, or Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi if, we don't wanna, if we don't want to choose a, a Christian. Uh, or how about uh, my, one of my current, current heroes is this, is this little girl. Emma Gonzalez, have you been paying any attention to her? Yeah. And isn't she great? Isn't she just so articulate and, and, and says it just right? And, and um, so in all of these people, what I'm saying is the reason that, that they're my spiritual superheroes is because they, in the, in the part of their lives at least that I observe, they're glorifying God. And God is glorified and God wishes to be glorified I believe, not only in, in these people, but in you and me. And, and so I'd like for you to remind me of some other spiritual superheroes at this time. Mother Teresa. Who? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Good one. Good one. Um, I like Diane Williamson. Diane Williamson, I do too. I love Diane Williamson. No, Marianne. Oh, did I? Yeah, I met Marianne Williamson. Did you meet Marianne Williamson? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Marianne. Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. Yeah. How about the young man who's been speaking up? Yeah, I don't. I don't actually know his name, but he's done a lot of speaking. I think he's going to be a. Power. Really, a lot of those kids yes, are just so I, articulate. I are. It's it's yeah. just amazing to me, and and they and so how is it that how do we need to act in order to be like Jesus, or in order to be like uh, Martin Luther King, or Buddha, or um, Pete Seeger? Pete Seeger, uh -huh. good one, good one. <laughs> how would we act in order to be those like those people? What would be the way? Loving. I like that. Nonviolent. Nonviolent. Yeah. Right. Loving, nonviolent. I, I made this whole list. Let me read you my list. Um, non-judgmental. One of the one of the main ways that, that uh, yeah, non-judgmental. <laughs> or, or who said that? Somebody or, me. Oh. Well, that's a, it's a hard one for me sometimes. So. Well, it's very hard. <laughs> and and then after you and then after you've judged, then then you've you've bought yourself a, a process, right? Because once you've once you've been judgmental, then you've got this thing, right, between you. I mean, we can stand here in church today and say we're all one, right? But once you've judged, then then you're making a making a line between <coughs> you and, and this other person. So you're saying, well, I'm one with all these people, but <laughs> not, you. not you. Well, I turn around and kick myself for doing that, and I'm judging right, myself. Right, precisely, yeah. because, because then you have, a, you have to you, you have, have a process, and the process is one of, the, one of the things on my list. Do you know the process of getting over having judged? It's forgiveness. Right? It's not only forgiving that person who did whatever it is that you judged, but as Nora points out, it's, it's forgiving yourself for having had that judgmental... Because, and, and the reason love is such a good one is because love is, is all of it, right? Not judging is, is love. Not, or forgiveness is love. The rest of my list, uh, kindness, love, well, love is on my list too, what do you know? Peace, grace, mercy, but, and the one that, 
that uh, Emma Gonzalez and the, the young man and so forth, the one that I, that I really like for, for now is speaking truth to power. Because that's what they're doing. They're, they're going into the streets and going up to the Capitol building and, and stuff like that, and they're speaking truth to power. And I don't know exactly if they, if they get this right. If you're doing it right, if you're doing it in the Jesus way, then, or in the Martin Luther King way, you do it in a non-violent way, non-judgmental way. Some of the things that I've heard them say sound a little judgy to me, but, but you know, they have, they have a lot of life left, so they'll be able to move through the process of, of, um, of living into the, the full enchilada, I think. So, is there more, are there more things that we need to add to the list besides forgiveness, non-judgmental, courage, good one. Love, peace, grace, mercy, joy. and speaking truth to joy. power, joy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are there others? Faith. Faith. Yeah. Hope. True. Hope. Trust. 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 Yeah. Wisdom. But, wisdom. Wisdom. Yes. Yes. Charity. So, charity. Since you've been reading Corinthians. <laughs> oh, I, well, when I heard somebody say faith and somebody say hope, then you got to have charity too, because that's the, you know, now these three things abide, faith, hope, and charity, and the greatest of these is charity, which is translated in other, other translations as love. So, caritas is the Greek word. Aren't you, don't you think I'm smart? <laughs> that I know Greek words? I know about 10 Greek words. But, but that turns out to be just about enough. Well, I told you you were all Greeks, right? So, what are some of the ways that, that you might, that I might, that you might glorify God? What's glory mean anyway? Remember? Pay hmm? tribute to. Do what? Pay tribute to. Pay tribute to? Yeah. What, what did you say? Remember. Remember. Yeah. Right. Recognize. Honor. Recognize. Play in, place in high esteem. Place in high esteem. Service. Yeah. Give credit. Give credit. Service. Servant. Service. Service. Yeah. Yeah, service. Giving with an open heart. Giving with an open heart. Listening. Listening. I'm thinking, choosing again, when you discover you've got an oops, choose again and remember who you are. Remember. I like that. That was in the song earlier. Remember who you are. and Because who are you? God's beloved. God's beloved, and, yeah, and, one of us is and, God's beloved. and what resides in your heart, it's the light of God. The light of God, light of God resides in your heart, and, <laughs> and if you're if you're remembering who you are, then automatically that light shines out of every place that it can shine out of. In and and when it does that, then it what it, I think then what it has the effect of doing is reminding other people who they are too, and. And, I don't know, it seems to me a little bit like the birds and the trees and the frogs and the mountains and stuff like that don't really need much reminding. I don't know, I'm not really familiar with the internal life of all those things, but it seems to me like they forget who they are much less often than we human beings do. I, and so, I know that they're spiritual. I've, I've walked by a pond full of frogs singing the Hallelujah Chorus. <laughs> they, they were absolutely singing the Hallelujah Chorus, except, of course, they were using frog words and frog melody. <laughs> and, and, but you could just tell what it was, right? They're saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. And, I'm a frog of God. I'm a frog of God. <laughs> right, right. The same thing with the, the red-winged blackbirds. I love red-winged blackbirds. Uh, they just go... 
Yeah. Or the snapping turtles. Anyway, whatever. All the all the different kinds. And people are like that too. Except it just seems to me like I and other people forget who we are a little bit more often than frogs and and snapping turtles and stuff like that. Don't you think? And and so when we discover the what was it you said? When we discover that we have done that, then we, then there's a, a way that we can choose. We can choose again, right? And when we choose again, then what we, if we remember what it is, if we remember what it is that we're choosing, we can choose to be those people of God, those, those homes of the light of God. That, and then, and then when we do that, we remember who we are and the, and the light shines and things are better than they were. And for us and for everybody else. And we, when, when we, that happens, then we can make this long list of ways in which we're blessed. And I think the truth is that if you do these things in love, if you do non-judgment in love, if you do forgiveness in love, if you do kindness in love, in fact, can you do kindness not in love? But it isn't really kindness then if you do, right? If, if, I mean, you can do what, you can, you can give someone what they need on one level, sort of, like you can give a, a person, a hungry person food without being in love with them. But in order for them to be really nourished, then what you also have to give them your love. Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that true? They're, they can eat the food and probably that'll sustain them for a day, but if you, if you love them, that'll sustain them, well, hopefully forever. Yeah, eternally, that's I think what, he's, what we say. And so, and so it all comes, comes around to love. I, I appreciate, I'm, I, it's okay if you didn't read Corinthians recently, but, um, <laughs> but I, the, the Apostle Paul is the very wise person, and, and I, raising love to the, to the highest level is what it's all about. Because really, what's God? All of it. Huh? All of it. All of it, and and I like I like the the phrase God is love. God. It's a pretty simple phrase, yeah. and and so if you if you think God is love, and if you think of God creating everything, the universe and and so forth, in love, that means in fact all of it is love. So if you look at through the Hubble telescope and you see some of those dif distant nebulae, or you find a black hole or something like that, then you can, you can realize that those are just aspects of God's love, just like you are. And so, when, when you do that, it's like listening to Jimmy sing, right? Or, and being able to sing along with him. And, and we say, is it I? And what you mean is, are you you're looking through this extremely powerful telescope and you see one of the wonders of the universe and you say, is it I? I've heard you calling in the night. I hear you calling in the night. I'll go. And by I'll go, that means I'll remember who I am and let your love light shine through me to all of your people. And by all your people, we mean the four-leggeds and the two-leggeds and the feathers and as well as and whatever frogs are and and black holes and distant nebulae and, and so on and so forth. The whole of it. All of it. Because, and then once you're deeply identified like that with all of it, then, I mean, you're floating in space. You're, you're, you're a space person. You're a, you're a person of God's love. And that is what we're all after. Amen.